Hello, my name is Dylan, but you can call me Buttercup. Welcome to Buttercup Yarn Art, a soft-spoken video journal where I play with yarn and share my thoughts. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. If there's anything you'd like to hear me talk about, please leave a comment to let me know. I am still working on my Gigi Cardi by Knititude. As you can see, I have emerged into a new color. It's not quite all the way across the row, but we'll fix that with this row. Um, I, I think I've mentioned before that I am planning to basically knit the body until I run out of yarn. I'm playing intentional yarn chicken. I have four, I had four skeins, cakes, whatever, of this yarn, and I want to use it all up in this sweater. So it's going to be a bit longer than the pattern recommends, but oh well. I like long sweaters, specifically cardigans. It'll be fine. Um, as with last week, I haven't made any progress since the last time you saw it except to finish up that second row. And again, that is because I am knitting secret things and I'm not going to be working on those on camera. So it's good that I have my DG Cardi to kind of show here. So that I have something to do on camera. And especially now that I have this new tripod, I am so excited about this new tripod. I love it so much. <laughs> Um, but the first thing that I want to talk about today is, um, I got my COVID booster shot, and I have a, I had a bit of a misadventure actually getting the shot, um, and it's kind of a funny story, and I want to tell it. So, I'm going to, because it's my channel and I can do what I want. So, I am eligible for the booster because my initial vaccine was Johnson & Johnson, the one shot, um, and in the US, if you got Johnson & Johnson for your initial vaccine, you're automatically eligible for a Pfizer or Moderna booster. So I made an appointment on last Friday. I made an appointment to go get a Pfizer booster at a Walgreens a little far away from where I lived, not super far, but far enough that I didn't know how to get there and had never been there before. So, I made the appointment on the Friday. I kind of rushed home after work, changed my shirt, and went to go get this booster. And I get to the store. I'm 15 minutes early, like they recommend. I get in line at the pharmacy window, and there's two other people in front of me, and the first person in front of me, you know, finally, we're, we're in line for at least ten minutes from the time that I get there, and the other two people had already been waiting. And the guy at the front of the line gets there. He says, hey, I have an appointment at such and such time. And the person 
asks him, did you make that appointment today? And he says, yeah, why? And she says, we're not accepting same-day appointments. You have to make another appointment. And turns him away. And so now it's me and this other woman. We've both made our appointment that day. And so I asked the pharmacist, does corporate know about this? Because we were able to sign up for appointments on the website, and if you're not accepting them, you know, there should be a way for corporate to turn that off. And the woman said, yeah, we're waiting for corporate to come fix it. So corporate knew. And they let people continue making those appointments. Same day. And I just think that's a bit ridiculous. Um, so I went home and last weekend I made an appointment for yesterday at my local Walgreens to get a Moderna booster. And, you know, got the confirmation, got the reminder, all good. And I'm at work yesterday and I get a call from my local Walgreens saying, hey, our pharmacy is going to close at the time of your appointment. And I was begging in my mind, please don't cancel it, please don't cancel it, please don't cancel it. And they said, can you come in half an hour earlier? And I had given myself more than enough time to, you know, get there and take care of everything. And so I said, yeah, of course. And so I go, I'm even earlier than the 15 minutes that they want me to be early. And I go up to the pharmacy and say, hey, my appointment was at this time. I said I would come earlier, and now I'm even earlier. And they're like, oh, great. We can do it right now. I was like, oh, awesome. So I finally got my booster. And the pharmacist was like, okay, just stay in the store for 10 minutes or so. You can wander around and then you're free to go. So I did. And at the moment, the only side effect that I'm having is that my arm is a bit sore at the injection site, but compared to my original vaccine where I spent the entire next day in utter misery, you know, it felt like, it felt like someone had tried to smash my head with a hammer. Um, I'll take my arm as a little sore. My arm is a little sore. is a vast improvement. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I'm good. So. Happy ending. After kind of a fun time. Fun in quotation marks. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and so that brings me to the second thing that I want to talk about, which is completely and utterly unrelated, um, which is modifying patterns until they are unrecognizable as what they originally were. So I have had 
several opportunities to wear the sorrel sweater that I made. And every time I wear it, I am slightly less satisfied with the finished product. And the last time that I wore it, I came up with a bunch of modifications that I would make to the pattern to make a sweater that I like better. Some of them are just picking different sizes um, or a different size for the bus measurement. Um, some are, you know, changing from doing the yoke right side out to doing the entire sweater inside out um, to the biggest change, biggest quote, um, is that instead of the dip stitches down the yoke, I want to do little braided cables down the yoke. Um, I like cables. I really like braided cables. And I think it would look really nice to have these skinny little braids going down the yoke. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm sorry for that noise. I have no idea what it was. Um, but yeah, and I even I figured out what size to change to. You know what? Basically, I figured out all of the changes that I was going to make. And then, I kind of, because I was at work while I was thinking about this during some downtime, and I, you know, I kind of figured out everything that I was going to do, and then I mentally kind of shopped my stash, thinking about what yarns I have, what I'm planning on using them for, you know, will I be okay with making a new sorrel instead of whatever I had originally earmarked this yarn for. And I was planning on making a soundtrack sweater by Olive Knits. And it's the same weight yarn, of course, you know, in two colors. That's a very simple color work sweater. And I'm going to take that yarn and basically do the same thing that I did for my original sorrel which was I cannibalized some yarn from a color work project that was purple and gray and I color blocked it. I made most of the yoke from the contrast color, the purple, and everything else in the gray once I ran out of the purple. And my soundtrack was going to be gray and purple the gray being the main color and the purple being the contrast color and I'm going to once again color block it use the purple for the yoke and until it runs out and the gray for everything else and I think that's kind of funny 
I was trying to find some non-color work projects in that same weight that I could use, but they were all projects that I really want to make, so I wound up with basically a darker version of the same color palette as my original sorrel. But I'm really excited for it and I'm actually going to push it up in the queue so I can make it sooner. Because I really like this idea and I want to do it. Um, but with the end of this row, I think that is it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.